Now, this lock is very peaty, fairly shallow, uh, produces very, very little in the way of food itself, midges mainly, lots of lamb red flies. And the question is, what do we fish for? Well, the trout here are quite naive when it comes to food. And one great group of flies that you can use on these lakes are the North Country spider patterns that we are including in the NIMS programme. I've got a team of three on, water hem blower, snipe and purple, and orange partridge, size 16. And what we're going to do is to see what we can find in this wee lock. Now what we're going to do is to go around the clock. So I'm casting parallel with the bank, down towards you and slightly out. See the patch of rushes uh, just below me, between you and me. Well, there could be trout feeding close to those rushes, or looking for food at least. And now we work our way out. So that was one cast, now we move out a bit. No need for a huge long casts. The trout are, are all the way around, should be. Just take our time going. Slowly figure of it eight, figure eight back. Worth bringing it in sometimes quite close, like so, because the trout will follow it. And then out again at a slightly different angle. A bit more line. Now to one. In, in heavy winds, always try and avoid excessive false casts. I've already had one tangle today, and tangles are a dreadful thing, especially if you're fishing fine, which I am with the small wet flies. Let's bring it back. Up, one out. Again, slightly different angle, working it slowly around. Let the fly sink and then slowly figure of eight back. Now we're coming across the wind and coming across the wind of course needs just a little bit more oomph and the pressure stroke the forward cast. Slowly work it back. Remember that if we've waded carefully and not too deeply, the trout will be quite close in. Fair old breeze today, fair old breeze. Now, which did this take, I wonder? Beautiful little trout. Come on, little fish, where are you? Come on, little fish. I thought you were bigger than that when you took. And again, snipe and purple. Come on, fish. Right, this is a typical Lochan if you're Scottish, wee lock if you're Irish uh, trout. Oh, uh, what, nine, ten inches long? Take a few for breakfast, they're delicious. And these lochans are full of them, absolutely solid with these fish. Beautiful brown, yellow, absolutely gorgeous. Typical brown trout. When we're doing our figure of eight, of course, we, it means casting a little bit into the wind, and so cut under the wind. Push the rod forward as though you're stabbing somebody at the final delivery, and that will take the fly out some way under the wind. Oh, I've got another fish. 
was hard fighting. What did he take? Another one for the snipe and purple. This one. I'll slide out. Beautiful little fish. Snipe and purple is catching, oh, I'd say seven out of nine, eight, eight out of nine fish. This perhaps is understandable in that the majority of food that these fish to see, they, it would be things like midges, uh, lambred flies. There's horrible midges that bite us in the evening if you come up here on a warm day. Um, and therefore they're tiny black things. So snipe and purple, super imitation really. You know, rivers in winter can seem quite lifeless things. We see a dipper fly past, but we don't really associate it with the, with the river because uh, it's a bird flying over the river. But in fact, when we go and delve in the river and look in the riverbed, then we find what the dipper and what next spring and summer and autumn the trout and grayling will be feeding on. So what I'm going to do, I've got my pond net. Uh, this is a very squishy professional pot affair. You can make one quite easily out of a bit of net curtain and a washing up bowl and a few uh, little bowls stolen from airlines and a paintbrush. It's all you need to find out what's living at the bottom of your river. What I'm going to go do is go and have a look in mine. So put those on the bank, let's go into the shallows and find out. The river's flowing from me to you, and so we can hold this downstream and we just do a little bit of a kick in the boulders, moving across as we go to take a good sample of what might be living in and amongst the rocks. Whatever you do, don't do vast areas. On areas which are heavily sampled, you can sometimes find that there is a decrease of invertebrates in the riverbed due to the amount of sampling that goes on. Uh, so be a bit sparing, just take a short area. Now what we need is a bowl of water. Now what I'm going to do is carefully wash out the contents of my net from that little sample I made and then we can have a look. Now, the best time of the year to do this is from now, which is uh, middle of March, through till June, July, when most of the creatures we're after will be growing. So, let's have a look what we've got. Well, I can see one or two. Look, a beast there is swimming quite actively, and one or two beasts with three big tails. Now, what I'm going to do is to take samples of these out to show you. Now, what we've got there are three tails. It's an upwing fly or a mayfly type nymph. You can see either side of the abdomen, there's pulsations. Those are tiny little gills, which again, only the upwing fly group has on its abdomen. Other uh, species of, of nymph, like stoneflies, don't have those gills. You'll notice that it's got very, very broad, squat legs. Look at the power in those legs. And that it doesn't swim very well. Well, it's adapted to living on the bottom of very, very fast streams. This is one of the ectdianurin nymphs. This is a nymph of a species called the false march brown, uh, which will be hatching on the river here from about April onwards. So these are getting quite large. They're going to grow a little bit larger before they start to hatch. Uh, the broad legs and the claws they have at the end of their feet are adaptations for holding on the bottom. And I always liken these to Grand Prix racing cars, where they've got a sort of streamlined squat shape which holds very close to the bottom so they don't get washed off in a big spate. The river here uh, yesterday morning was 12 feet higher than it is today and yet these didn't get washed away simply due to that ad adaptation. So that's one sort of, of upwing fly nymph that we find in stony rivers, the ectdianurids.